We are not taking care about our cooking methods. We are not taking care of our well, source of the food that we are preparing, and then eventually it leads to gut issues in the body. Okay, eventually this becomes toxic, disease-generating, immune system faults. So it's very important to give a balanced meal. To give a balanced meal, we need to know what is a balanced. Okay, by by this session, I hope we all are understanding that if we are going to make a change in the child's life, how much change we are supposed to make in our life first. Then we are going to make a change in their life, right? So understand this: that whenever we are eating convenience food, whenever we are eating food from outside, we are leading to issues in the body. We are leading to constipation, lot of oil consumption, lot of sugar consumption unnecessarily, addiction. You know, a lot of us spoke when we were talking in the interactive part that it's very difficult for a child to shift from one food to another food. from fruit to another you know thing or from processed food or from a dietary beverage to something much more healthier why because they are addicted they want to have what they want to have because the taste has been registered now whether that has happened see nothing can happen in in a jiffy it takes a period of, it's a process it happens over a period of time so if the child has not been stopped for 10 times that's when the 11th time the addiction starts if the child has been stopped at third time it will never go to the point when it starts becoming an addiction so once they are addicted it's the worst thing and that's the time when we need to be very careful we need to be pre planned very vigilant on what they are having and what they are not having every child today will pick up a plate of french fries over any other food or any other fruit why because we are not imparting the right kind of knowledge to them also the taste they are addicted to that taste we so very few children know exactly what they should be having and what they should not be having so these if they don't know what they are having they will lead up with such issues and then getting them back from these issues is a diff- is, is is difficult against sleep disturbances you know as parents we are so worried that we cannot be giving sugar before the child sleeps or we cannot be giving sugar after 5 o'clock 6 o'clock you know we are not giving them a uh, heavy dessert in the night or we are not cutting the cake in the night we are cutting the cake the next morning so that if the child has to eat something they have to eat it post or during the day hours only because they should not be having issues in their sleep so sleep disturbance is one of the reasons why the child is very groggy the mental cognition is not good they are more confused and it will not help them in the future okay a uh, change in mood some of the children are very active very stubborn uh, you know very retaliating very irrational at the same time too much energy this change in mood is only taken care by the food that we eat if we are having a diet which is high on sugar or salt or aerated drinks they'll be always in that high energy levels without any nutrient given to them neither will they feel calm neither will they sleep well and then to make them calm and to make them feel okay we are putting them in yoga classes it doesn't work it's not the yoga classes that are going to make a difference it's the food that they are eating from morning to night that's going to make a difference on their mentality okay so we need to understand that we cannot over stimulate a child and this is exactly what happens when uh, we are eating packaged and processed food even as a matter of fact the chips and the biscuits now again change in the gut microbiome always understand what is the change in the gut microbiome happening when you are eating food from the outside when we are eating food from the outside they are not good on any nutrients they have a lot of preservatives acidity regulators color that is not to be added in any of the food that we should be having ideally which is a child friendly food also they um we are not very sure about the sugar the sugar substitutes the quality of the food products so at this point of time in no ways is the gut microbiome getting nutrition the gut bacteria which is there in a life is dying because of the unhealthy nutrition so to promote that we need to eat the right kind of food otherwise all these allergic reactions and uh, healthy uh, if you if unhealthy habits the children can alter their microbiome for life that's when a lot of adults who grown up now come on let, let's understand this a child who's never had issues born and extremely normal at 12 years 13 years 14 years has a lot of stomach ache has a lot of gas issues has a lot of constipation why 12 years 13 years is so tender of a digestive system to even understand what is gas and they are facing with so much issues acidity colic the food the colic gels that we get for our children they should not even be there because the if the quality of food is good these things shouldn't be there but because there is some problem in the quality of food these things are you know uh, medicines to the body 
But do you think at 12 years, 13 years, even 5 years, 6 years, children should be given this kind of food or should be given medicines? No. So it's always good to create a balanced routine, to have a good setup so that eventually the child develops a good gut. Okay. And atopy. Atopy is an extreme case, certain cases where you know you're having too much inflammatory foods. Crozo, candies, burgers, pizzas, pastas, a um, lot of, you know, uh, uh, sugar-loaded beverages or, you know, something that desserts that come, cupcakes, all of that are inflammatory food to the body. Chips, biscuits, peanut butter, different flavored of, uh, you know, those uh, the candies that come, the tall candies, straw candies, everything is flavored. Everything is colored. Everything has inflammation written in it in capital letters so these things eventually lead to skin issues rashes eczema tonsils all of this gets activated when we are having food from the outside so the first and the foremost thing that we can do as adults is to avoid anything that is packaged and processed again there is no restriction to eat fried there is no restricting restriction to eat something which is rich on jaggery or too rich on dates because they're children they're utilizing this in the right way but only if it is homemade if it is from the outside we don't know if it is fresh or no Okay, so these are some of the things that are happening in a child's body or that can be an effect of eating the junk food into a child's body like constipation, atopy, change in the gut microbiome and whatever you know we saw before this, sleep disturbances, irritability of the mood, all of that. So we need to avoid this and start making better, better choices. Now. Okay, and now having gathered so much of information, I would like to share a case from all of you and I would love to know how you would advise this parent on their child. Okay, there was a parent with the child who was three years old and they came with the complaint of constipation and of course as we know three year olds don't really know what they want, what they don't want. Uh, they are picky eaters. I mean they, they just know, they just like what they like and they don't like anything else. So they don't know healthy or unhealthy but they know what they like and what they dislike. So. Further investigating about these issues, uh, we understood that there is screen time, of course. Not too much, but there was screen time. There was very little physical activity. The child was almost, you know, playing games, sitting and not very active. Didn't want to eat vegetables and fruits consumed a lot of sugar and especially in the second half of the day. So what is the advice that we would be giving on, uh, you know, uh, giving the parent on something like that? Now that we, we have we've been fortunate enough to listen to this session and understand the basics, what would you advise a parent with a three-year-old who came with so many complaints? Please write your answers in the chat box. I would love to read them. Should we be talking something about how we should be reducing the screen time? What is the first three things that comes to your mind when you're reading something like that? And especially when somebody has constipation or something, someone is not okay. Of course, it'll be a matter of concern, right? Like I remember the times when, when the children are so small, we always think, okay, did did they did they dirty the diapers? And if they did, how often did they do that? That's the count we all mothers have kept at some point of time. Okay, we have an answer here that somebody says, uh, reduce screen time, increase the physical activity, try to put in vegetables in the diet using different ways. Replace sugar with jaggery. That's amazing. We are so good uh, references that we can follow. Absolutely right. I think, uh, yeah, we can put in a little vegetables in the diet in different ways. We as parents can engage with children more, play with the children more, yes. Have homemade food sitting with the child patiently, absolutely. I think that's, that's absolutely right. I think we've almost got the gist of how we can be raising great children and healthy children in the future. Yeah, we need to engage with your children more. That's absolutely right. And, you know, today we also go back to the point to see that why are children having more screen time is because somewhere down the line we've been drifted apart from them, right? If we indulge into activities with them, they might not want to even see the screen. That's great uh, input. 
More activity avoid sugar, homemade sweet laddus instead during the day. Absolutely, this is one point I wanted somebody to highlight, and thank you so much for doing that. If we are giving them anything sugar, we need to give them in the first half of the day, not something in the next half of the day, because in the first half at least they utilize it and it will be uh, burnt by the body. That's right. Any more answers regarding this? I would love to hear. I think I'm getting more suggestions that I also can learn from and I can advise my parents on. Less screen time, more physical activity, playing with the kid, encourage to drink more water. Absolutely right. I think this should be like highlighted and with the golden, you know, marker, encourage to drink more water. I think we become as water alarms beyond a point and we need to do that, right? Uh, this is something that is very important so that one of the reasons why there can be constipation is because there's a lot of sugar and there is no fiber. Okay, so automatically including some of the foods that are rich on fiber are very important. Any vegetable carrot, cucumber, cabbage, capsicum, onion, tomatoes in the form of tomato soup, juice, whatever is available to you, you can start giving a child if the child is constipated. Prunes work very well when the child is constipated, of course. Always using natural sources. Also, we sometimes understand that if there is too much sugar, that itself can lead to constipation. So, reducing sugar, increasing fiber can help deal with constipation. Secondly, screen time. More physical activity will help us to reduce the screen time also and will improve the gut microbiome. And third thing very important is having a balanced meal. Picky eater but still must be picking up on certain food items like rice, roti, jawar, oats, millets, any sort of you know base that they like, stuffing it with the right kind of proteins, paneer, soya bean, dals, beans, pulses, eggs, whatever they like and maybe something like you know some vegetable or something added to it. So having balanced meals will always help. Thank you so much for being so interactive and that really helped me also. Thank you. Okay, now coming to the last part of the session where we're going to talk about practical solution for parents. Okay, now in today's organization as a working mother or a father, it's one of the most dreaded question. What is it that we should be cooking for dinner? What is it that we should be cooking for lunch? What is the breakfast that you want to have? Obviously exhausted and at the end of the day, you don't want to do the thinking, right? Uh, so, of course, sometimes when we don't know what we've planned, we pick up food from the outside. We are like, okay, let's do sandwiches. Okay, let's do this. I'm getting uh, ready to eat something. We just, you know, reheat it and we'll have it. But what we should be doing and what are the solutions that we should be working on is this. We should be creative, okay? Now, be it like a simple dal rice. I'll give you an example. One day, you can make the dal and rice yellow. The other day, you can make the dal and the rice green by adding your palak or green leafy vegetables or whatever. And the third day, you can add your dal and the rice by, you know, making a rainbow, by adding different colors. This was just an example of a dal and a rice. Be creative means you can play with colors. You can play with textures, okay? Sometimes the dal and rice can be liquidy. Sometimes they can be two different. One is liquid, one is solid, like the rice and the dal. So you're explaining also to them that, see, there are two different things and we are eating it together. Sometimes it can just be hard. It can be a pot meal, basically. So that. So when we are creative, it is always going to be appreciated by the child, be it in texture, be it in form, be it in presentation, in any way, or be it in color. Less salt and sugar. This is one request to all you young adults here for your children. Please do not provide salt and sugar in excess to the child. This is detrimental in every way possible. Okay, so minimum salt consumption, no addition of hidden sugar, no spices, salt, color, extra that we are doing apart from the general stuff. Fruits and vegetable sticks with homemade dips for snacks. Many of us will not want to do this because sometimes the kids are pretty, uh, you know, picky in eating something like that. But telling them I want an orange stick with a white dip, I want a green stick with a red dip will always help to gauge their interest. See, once you gauge anybody's interest, then you can nail them down for sure. Okay, so gauging interest by colors, textures, presentation will always help them. And most important, if I am eating it and if I am exclaiming, wow, it's so yummy, do you want to try this? 
that will also instigate some 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 sort of inquisitiveness in them which they want to try and for all you know once they try they love it so we have to play with their you know forms again what's very important is breakfast homemade fresh breakfast let's not do any breakfast cereals let's not do a prepackaged packaged food items let's do something which is typically prepared in the house right from poha upma idli dosa paratha whatever is the cultural local liking children who are young who are very active can also do puris once a, once in a week that's absolutely okay as long as you're frying them in the right oil the oil which is utilized is not recooked and reused and it's healthy for them uh, a rainbow diet as i was saying the more colors the better the more excitement that they get because they see so many colors and that's how they learn and include whole grains like legumes and pulses now we either do it in the form of a paratha we do it in a pot meal we do it as a kebab we do it as you know hidden uh, ingredients i think we parents are great at doing that right like today if you want to make a child do something we'll definitely do it however so we need to know the importance of it first so that we can do it for them apart from this again healthy homemade snacks like corn salad millet pancakes makhana fruit smoothies chilas wraps work very well when it comes to children and maybe of course they have the seasonal likings like you know they like an upma they like an idli or whatever they like so you can always provide them with healthy homemade snacks stock up on long life vegetables and fruits so of course like a banana is short lived if you will not finish it in the 3 4 days it's going to get uh, bad but if you do like a watermelon or you do like a papaya if you do like an apple if not today tomorrow they are going to eat it for sure right so fruit can be one of those snacks and vegetables can definitely be one of those fun meals that they are doing so they don't really need to sit and eat their vegetables right they can carry the sticks you can put them into the in, into the boxes so that even if they are traveling around they can pick up the sticks and eat it or you can also give them the entire peeled carrot or a cucumber and ask them to nibble on it slowly and steadily the younger kids rather than teethers they can be nibbling on something like that that will also give them the taste and hydration that they are looking at and of course we cannot be planning end moment okay so something that's very end moment will not turn out well so plan your meals and the grocery list in advance so if i want to eat a dinner i have to think about it in the afternoon at around 1 o'clock 2 o'clock to know what i'm eating at at least 8 o'clock okay that way it will help us to plan our meals to get the ready made requirement for the meal and we can work better when it comes to nutrition and collating all of it together now one of the major major part of the session where i think we all have been waiting for what is the healthy alternatives to replace junk so of course first we have options of different cuisines okay so it can be a dosa it can be uttapam it can be idlis it can be parathas it can be maybe say steamed rice with vegetables or a rainbow rice it can be um you know it can be those quesadillas or it can be tacos all of this work very well if the ingredients are good so 